There were many trains to take the name Orient Express, but only one in space. Good morning, everyone. Your goal is to ascertain the foretold's yes, true no. nature. I know exactly what this sounds like. Isn't this exciting? It's immortal, unstoppable, unkillable. Can we get a new expert? Those that bear the foretold stare have 66 seconds to live. Stop the clock. Hi everyone, Tardis going 123 here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the 8th episode of Series 8, Mummy on the Orient Express by Jamie Matheson. Matheson? Something along those lines. So yeah, anyway, this episode was on quite a while ago, I'm sorry it's taken me so long to get around to reviewing it, but finally we're here, and this episode was absolutely incredible, I'll just say that right off the bat, it was incredible. And it's just, it's the best episode, I think, since Moffat took over Doc 2. Now that's saying a lot, I know, but well, actually it's not really that's saying that much, given the quality of quite a lot of the episodes since then, but you know, nevertheless, it is a lot of time, a lot of episodes, and this one, yeah, I loved it. It was the best since then, and it's not absolutely perfect, but it's the closest we've come since then. I would say, and probably since, hmm, I'm not sure really, but definitely since Moffat took over. Maybe before. Um, best since the specials, not sure. There are some series for episodes that are quite good. Um, the only one that I can really think that definitely this is not better than since the, in the new series is The Impossible Planet slash Satan Pit. But anyway. Let's talk about why I love this. So, you know, it's an interesting idea. There are a lot of good ideas in this. The Orient Express being in space at first. I wasn't too sure about it. I wasn't too keen on the idea in the trailers and whatnot. I thought that's one thing that, you know, why set in space? It feels too much like a gimmick. You can set anywhere. But then, they really did make use of that, I think. Um, there's a scene where the kitchen is um, opened and what not to the outside and you just see the bodies floating around the space that is chilling and it kind of like gets this idea of real claustrophobia because there's nowhere you can run to you can't just get out of the tra train and run you're stuck there you can't just stop the train or anything you're just stranded in space with a mummy that given 66 seconds after you've seen it will kill you and yeah that's a frightening idea and then you've got the 1930s get up kind of thing with the general aesthetics of the train and the characters within it. That was quite good. Um, there was a celebrity cameo, I guess, in this by Foxes. I'd never heard of her before the casting either. And it, they made a big deal of it, and it really wasn't a big thing. You know, the song's good, but other than that, it was only a quick cameo. She was a she wasn't even on screen for a minute, to be honest. Then the other guest star is Frank Skinner, who is great in this. He really was a um, standout character, other than the Doctor. I'm not... Um, I'd say Clara was just a bit low. You know, he, he kind of like plays a companion role, because the one thing this does do good is it splits up the Doctor and Clara. It doesn't have them together. They've each got their own little subplots going on. And Clara gets to be with Maisie. Um, so that's an interesting kind of like set up there. And you've got that interesting relationship dynamic going on between them and then Clara having to lie to her and whatnot. Well, that's all very good. And what I like about Maisie's character and characters in general in this story is that they're quite well developed. You know, you've got um, Maisie's thing about how her mum, um, who was really her gran and whatnot, that whole thing. Now she was she died and then she regretted it and whatnot and yeah that's it's quite good stuff there you know it's nothing too deep you know you can't really get that in forty five minutes but you know it's good enough and they are strongly defined and good enough characters given the time limit which is something we've been lacking recently you normally have just one token character who gets a decent amount of development yes or in some cases no development whatsoever and it's just there to do something in terms of the story, like um, 
isn't it? I've forgotten the name of the character now. Lundvik, that's it, in the last episode, was only there to serve as the argument for blowing up the moon, or killing the moon, or whatever, or killing the creature inside the moon, however you want to think about it. And speaking of that, let's now get on to that topic of how this picked up on that. Now, initially, from the trailers and whatnot, it looked like and all the promotional images, it looked like this was going to be a Clara light episode, you know, a full on focusing on the Doctor episode. And while it did focus on the Doctor a lot more than previous episodes had, this was very much the Doctor's episode and not Clara's. You know, it um, it did feature Clara a fair deal. And as I said, it split them up, which was good. Um, but she was there. I was a bit shocked. Not, not in a bad way, just kind of like, I wasn't really expecting her to follow out the TARDIS at the start. And it was all normal. And that was odd, but eventually it's revealed that it's not normal, this was a farewell thing. I guess that could have been handled slightly better, but you no, know, for what it was, it was okay. I'm more interested in this story itself rather than that overarching bit. So, well, that's that then. Um, the mummy itself was quite a creepy thing. And the way it killed people as well, that was very nicely thought out. Yeah, it's, it's got this odd balloon deflating noise. Which is, which could almost have been comical, but it's done just right. That it's very creepy, and the mummy itself was very well designed. You know, I think it could have done with a bit, and also like the unblurry of the screen. It's similar to how they did it in um, Journey to the Center of the Tardis with those creatures, except this is a lot better than those creatures. It honestly is. So, the mummy is creepy. And it it just looks quite terrifying, you know. I guess it looks like the standard mummy, but the idea of it being a soldier and whatnot, that was a smart twist. That was nice. And you know, it didn't feel like a lot a lot of the time in New Who we get these plot twists here to that tw plot twists that just make the whole thing redundant and not scary. But here it doesn't do that because it is still a soldier and whatnot. And then it salutes and crumbles to dust. And you know, that, that kind of like general idea was very well thought out. You know, it didn't feel like the plot twist where you take this really big thing and then make it into a small thing. Like what happened in Kill the Moon, for example. That was a good thing which just then went to waste. Here it's got a plot twist, but it's not wasted. The resolution is a bit rushed, but it kind of like fits into 66 seconds. Thing. You couldn't really push that whole lot. And you know, it worked for me. This is probably the best resolution we've had in a while. It was, it didn't feel overly rushed. So yeah, that's that. That's a positive, definitely. Um, I look at um, what's it called? Then you have that final scene between the Doctor and Clara, where they kind of like resolve everything. That was that was good, I guess. And then you got the whole thing with her lying to Danny, which comes up again in. Flatline, we're not going to talk about Flatline. You and I have seen that because I've taken so long to review this, I'm sorry. But I have got around to it now, as you can see. So, yeah, there's that whole plot going on. And, um, overall, I think it's a very good episode. Now, going back to what I said a bit earlier. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, Gus, sorry, Gus. And this story's overall contribution to the arc. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to actually contribute in the end. It does have similar things, kind of like the idea of the dead and whatnot. But, you know, um, I guess, or maybe it's going to be tied up in another story. Maybe it's going to have a sequel where they find out who Gus is. But then again, I think it is because it's got the whole um, telephone number thing. I don't, I'm kind of going back and forth here. But yeah, it, it feels like it's a good contribution to the overall arc. Probably one of the most interesting. It definitely ties into that a lot more than any other episode has. But at the same time, it stands alone extremely well. It doesn't kind of like, you don't need much prior knowledge. It's all set up well and whatnot. And it leaves you intrigued as to what's happening. It doesn't feel you, they, it doesn't leave you feeling kind of like upset that it didn't tell you about that. And I'm glad that that happened. You know, to be honest, I'm glad that this all went quite well in the end. So, yeah, overall, let's get on to the overall thoughts now. Overall, 
you know, I'd pray just this all the way through this review. It's a 10 out of 10. Of course it would be. Minor flaws here and there. Nevertheless, incredible, incredible episode. Great guest cast. Great supporting characters. Very well uh, realised and whatnot. Background characters. Something that, pointed out, something that was pointed out to me and I thought, oh my goodness, they're right. And that's what, that was the background characters didn't speak at all. But, like, on the train. When they were to doctor, they didn't say anything whatsoever. So that was odd, but nevertheless, you know, other than that, that's that's a very minor nickel. It's just something that I think, you know, is an easy improvement and doesn't mark down any points whatsoever. So yeah, um, let's finally conclude this review. I've kept saying overall for well the past minute, so. Yeah, thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you all next time with my top 10 Philip Hinchcliffe stories. Bye everyone. Such a good time, I'm having a ball. Don't stop me now. If you wanna have a good time, just give me a call. Don't stop me now. Don't stop me. I'm having a good time. I don't wanna stop it all. I'm a rocket ship on my way to Mars. On a collision course, I'm a satellite. I'm out of control, I'm a sex machine ready to reload Like an animal, I'm about to oh, 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 explode I'm burning through the sky, yeah 200 degrees is why they call me Mr. Fahrenheit I'm traveling at the speed of light, I want to make a supersonic world Stop me now I'm having such a good time I'm having a ball Don't stop me now If you wanna have a good time Just give me a call Don't